The Tesla Model 3 made waves in the automotive world when it first came out for the 2017 model year. It inspired many auto manufacturers to get on the EV bandwagon. To this day, the Tesla Model 3 remains a gold standard for an all-electric sedan. In 2024, it got a very substantial refresh. You could almost call it a complete redesign, better than ever. Hi, this is Joe from Wastecar Ford, and today we're talking about not this 2024, but 2025 Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive. Let's dive in. Nice color combination, excellent shape. The Model 3 is a compact sedan. Uh, that competes with electric vehicles and it competes with ICE vehicles, which stands for Internal Combustion Engine. With the features, refinement, performance you get with the Model 3, you wouldn't compare this to a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic, you compare this more to like a 3 Series BMW, Mercedes-Benz C-Class, Lexus IS Series, yet its ownership costs are very low. It's actually one of the lowest cost of ownership vehicles that you can buy. Don't take my word for it, do a little internet sleuthing yourself and you'll find that the Model 3 has incredibly low ownership costs. And that, a big reason is because of the simplicity of electric vehicles. There is complexity as far as the battery technology goes, the software, the synergy that powers and makes all the features work. But when you talk about moving parts, an internal combustion engine vehicle has thousands of moving parts and it requires more regular service. An electric vehicle has dozens of moving parts. You have the batteries and you have the electric motors and it's uh, almost like an appliance. It's like a power drill because the batteries, electric motors, they don't need oil changes. They don't need uh, emission, complex emission control systems, fuel injection systems. Very simple indeed. The Tesla Model 3 is an extremely quiet vehicle, not just because it doesn't have an engine, but also because of the way it's constructed. If we look here, Tesla uses this uh, proprietary double pane glass, which has a sound deadening material sandwiched in between. It's all around the whole vehicle, uh, and it makes it very, very quiet. It's, al it's almost like a sensory deprivation chamber inside here of how quiet it is. With the 2024 refresh, we saw these new perforated seats. It's synthetic leather, and with that perforation, it allows for not just heated seats, but cool seats in the front. It's getting kind of toasty out there, 81 degrees, a little bit uncomfortable. Those cooled seats will remedy that situation. When your back gets all nasty and sweaty and gross, uh, the cooled seats will solve that issue with no problem at all. We have these dual uh, glass panels up here to allow lots of natural light inside. You can get sun shades to dim things down if it gets too bright out. And we can see that the majority of the functionality is in the screen. It is very devoid of buttons and knobs, and that is by design. When you have a button or a knob, that is there forever. You can't change that. This screen is infinitely reconfigurable. I, I've had a Tesla Model 3 for the past three and a half years, and the display of the screen, the features have changed many, many times. It's one of the few vehicles that actually gets better the older it gets. Uh, Tesla was one of the first car companies to start pushing over their updates when it launched its Model S in 2012. And now uh, the industry has tried to catch up by doing their own over their updates. But Tesla seems to still dominate as far as frequency and updates go. I probably get an update in my vehicle every couple weeks, improving features, adding features. We have this huge display screen with nice maps. Uh, it doesn't have the premium connectivity yet because uh, it needs a new uh, account added to the vehicle. But when you add this to your Tesla account, you add a credit card in there, for $10 a month, you can uh, purchase premium connectivity. It's well worth it. Basically, it has a cell phone uh, transponder inside it. Uh, so it, I, it gets cell data. So that $10 a month premium connectivity, you can stream music, you can stream movies, you can get live Google Maps, live traffic updates. It is fantastic. Tesla has superchargers all over the place. You can pretty much drive almost anywhere in the United States uh, with using the supercharger. And Tesla has a great trip planner to help get where you're going. You just put where you need to go. And the trip planner will figure out, it'll figure out where to charge for, how long you need to charge for, so you never have to have range anxiety. You never need to worry if you'll make it to your destination. Tesla's got your back. You can see within 10 miles of us, there's one, two, three, four, five, six superchargers. There's also games that you can play. Obviously you can't do it while you're driving, <laughs> but while you're supercharging or passing time away, maybe your spouse is in the store when you're waiting in the car. Uh, you have the light show, Rainbow Road. You have the silly things like the emissions where you can make fart noises. You have a boom box where you can play 
uh, music through your horn. You can make your sound, horn sound like a fart or a goat. You can talk through the horn in a kind of a creepy voice. That'd be kind of funny on Halloween. <laughs> uh, some of the stuff is kind of silly. Some of the stuff is really functional. So let's take a look at the display screen, the software screen right here. So this is a Model 3 long range, 8,534 miles. So there's a dual motor and there's a single uh, rear electric motor version of the Model 3 uh, in North America. Uh, this is the long range single rear motor. So it has one motor in the back, still very quick, but uh, it has actually a little bit better range than uh, the dual electric motor because with the dual electric motors, you have, you have two motors pulling electricity from the battery and also that extra electric motor adds weight, which reduces your efficiency. If you'll, this is one of the most efficient EVs that Tesla makes, one of the most efficient EVs period. Uh, the all-wheel drive has about a 350 mile range when fully charged. This is a little over 360 miles. Pretty amazing. And let's talk about charging. So this employs lithium ion battery technology. So there's a couple different uh, forms of battery technology out there in the EV market. Uh, we have LFP batteries, which stands for lithium iron, not ion. Iron, like I'm pumping iron, but we call them LFP batteries uh, simplest, to make it simpler. So LFP batteries are kind of like the entry level batteries. The majority of them are made in China. Um, they always like to be charged to 100%, but they don't have as much energy density. Uh, they generally weigh heavier than a comparable lithium ion battery for the amount of energy it holds. So generally the cheaper EVs have those, but they do like to be charged to 100% for daily use to actually recommend it. Where lithium ion batteries, which we have in this one, uh, they use a little bit different technology. They don't like to be charged to 100% for daily use. They prefer to be charged to 80%. See, if I take this slider, which uh, sets the uh, total charge limit, if I put it to 100%, it will give me a little warning message saying, oh, you should only charge to 80%. So this is for road trips. It's perfectly fine every once in a while to charge it to 100% for a long road trip. But for daily use, to keep the happy, long, healthy life of your lithium ion battery, you charge it to 80%. But with a 360 mile range, that's still pretty good. 80% uh, of 360 miles is about, you know, I'm doing math in my head, but it's probably still close to 300 miles or so. Uh, so this thing is absolutely amazing. Most people don't drive 300 miles a day. Most people don't drive 100 miles a day. Most people don't usually drive 50 miles a day. Usually it's, you know, 50 miles or less as most people's daily commutes. So this is a great commuter vehicle and with this large battery and amazing supercharging network, it's also a great road trip vehicle. Um, it doesn't take long to charge. It takes about 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes goes by pretty fast, especially if you've been in the car for a couple hours, you wanna maybe empty your bladder, get a bite to eat, something to drink. Uh, these Tesla superchargers are generally strategically placed by strip malls, full lawn malls, restaurants, points of interest. So you have things to do while your car is charging and 20 minutes doesn't take that long. It goes by pretty fast. We have amazing parking cameras, great for situational awareness. There's cameras all the way around this vehicle so it can constantly record what's going on when the vehicle is parked. You can pull up live camera views, check on your vehicle. It'll actually alert you if there's any suspicious activity close to your vehicle, if someone's hanging around, standing too close to your car, your car will tell you on your mobile app and you can pull up the cameras, you can record from your phone if they're doing something sketchy. Uh, if you even miss that, it detects something sketchy, it will record it and when you get in your vehicle, it'll say, hey, you know, three century events have happened. Also works great while you're driving. There's uh, incidents where, you know, I had a coworker who was rear-ended in his Tesla and it's pretty obvious who's at fault with these Tesla cams. The technology is absolutely amazing and the features just keep on improving, improving. Even as this car gets older, it's gonna gain features, it's gonna get better and it's gonna get safer. This one also employs uh, Tesla's latest full self-driving computer, Hardware 4. This does not have the full self-driving capability of the software. That's $99 a month or $8,000. This one employs autopilot, which is basically traffic or cruise control, which uh, steers the vehicle in this lane, brakes and accelerates, works fantastic. I love the understated styling of the Model 3. Very sexy lines, very minimalist design. We have a frunk here, so there's no engine, so it's more space. Also a safety, also a safety feature of all this space to absorb crash energy in a frontal collision. And even though the Model 3 is a compact, uh, it has a lot of space on the inside. Since it doesn't have drive shafts going through the underneath the floor, 
gas tanks, exhaust systems. It allows for a clean sheet design in the interior, freeing it up for more interior space. This is a compact vehicle about the same footprint of like a Honda Civic, uh, Toyota Corolla. I had plenty, of, I, I, I had that front seat adjuster for my height. I have plenty of leg room here, plenty of headroom, very, very comfortable place to be. We also have another screen back here when uh, the Model 3 had its refresh in 2024. They added a screen back here so you can adjust the climate control. We have heated rear seats. You can play music. Uh, I think you can actually get wireless uh, Bluetooth headphones and uh, the rear seat passengers can maybe listen to different content that's playing on the main audio system, if I understand correctly. Uh, you can watch Netflix and Hulu. You can play video games. You can uh, control settings, control the volume. You have USB-C connectivity. Amazing, amazing stuff. Going towards the rear, we have a power operated lift gate and we have a surprising amount of cargo space back here. Again, since we're not hampered by the conventional construction of a internal combustion engine powered vehicle, an ICE car, we have more space. You have storage on this side, storage on that side, but guess what? Look at this, a huge storage area under here. This is rather large. This has an amazing amount of storage space. Uh, I, I have a big van. I have a transit van, a Ford transit van, a passenger van, which sometimes we use for cross code trips, but sometimes we're in the Tesla and with all the storage, the frunk, we can fit a lot of stuff in it for such a small vehicle. Uh, also looking at little things like this in the construction, uh, Tesla thinks of things like this and they use data to improve the ownership costs. So one common uh, repair on Teslas, one of the most common accidents is a rear end uh, collision. So someone gives you a little love tap at four or five miles an hour, that can cause a lot of damage. But we can see when they, redid the re when they did the refresh of the Model 3, this lower part of the bumper is like a matte plastic. So this is gonna be a lot easier and cheaper to replace than a painted portion. Uh, so uh, the way that you can see that this sticks out slightly further than the rest of the bumper. So this is gonna take the brunt of the impact before the painted portion. Uh, so when you have to take it to the body shop and fix it, that's gonna lower uh, the costs and that will also help lower in insurance rates. They're so different than any other vehicle on the road, even different than a lot of other electric vehicles. A lot of other electric vehicles Pretty much the auto manufacturers just took, you know, the, <laughs> it feels like they just took components of a gas car and just added a battery and electric motor and took out the engine and the gas tank. The functionality and features are really not that different. Even if the Tesla had an engine in it, if it was a hybrid, aside from all that, all this cool stuff, the technology, the cameras, the autopilot, the full self-driving, all that stuff, that would make it special aside from the fact of it being an EV. But being an EV is all that much better too some of the lowest ownership costs, some of the coolest technology, best performance, one of the safest vehicles on the road. There are a lot of reasons to consider a new or pre-owned Model 3 for your next car. And they're all different price ranges. You can get an older one like mine, and they're very affordable right now. When I first started buying and selling Teslas, uh, you know, Model 3s were 50, 60, $70,000. Now you can get a nice pre-owned Model 3 for about 20,000 miles, and guess what? They're holding up really well. Uh, there are plenty of Model 3s out there with 100, 200, some approaching 300,000 miles still in the original batteries, still running great. Don't take my word for it, do some research. You'll find that actually EVs are, and Teslas are tending to last longer than internal combustion engine vehicles because uh, battery technology is very robust. And since there's fewer moving parts, there's no oil leaks, no transmissions to go bad. Just in general, when you have thousands of less moving parts, that means just thousands of, thousands of things, thousands of less things to go wrong. Well, I'm Joe from Wayscar Ford. We sell new Fords, new Isuzus, and of course we have a very wide variety of premium vehicles on our lot. Teslas, Corvettes, Ford, Rams, Jeeps, Polestars, you name it, we got it, except from obviously Lamborghinis and Ferraris and stuff like that. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. We have content coming out all the time. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you soon.